Hey, you there. Thank you for watching and welcome to Forge Land Forever. Today I have a 7v7 custom matcher on the most amazing Naroxus map generator. So let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players. Starting for Team 1 in the Northeast, ending with Team 2 in the Southwest. Starting up with Team 1's southernmost player, it is Azuros. He's going first line as a Cyber, and he is a 2100, the highest ranked player on Team 1. To his northwest in Batman Gray, we have Kenny Real Dad going first line as another Cyber here for his team. He is a 1200. In Emerald Green in the east is Blazer O Flasher going first line as another Cyber here for Team 1, and he is also a 1200. The fourth Cyber on Team 1 to introduce is Lummy Surmise going first line. He is a 1500, and he is in the color Rust. In Chevy Crimson here, the first you we have to be introduced is Willow Wisp going first land. He is in Chevy Crimson. He is a 2,000 rated player. In Orange Color Orange to his northeast, we have Luca going first land as a Seraphim. He is a 2,000 as well. And in the rear guard on here for Team 1, it is Schmuckberry, sorry, Benny going first land. He is a UEF. He is in Regal Purple and he is a 1,400. So for Team 1's side of the map, they have four Cybrans, two UEF, and one Seraphim, which means Team 1 does not have access to Aeon technology. Starting up with Team 2's regular slot player in Glow in the Dark Green is Legend Lord 2 going first line as a UEF. He is a 1500. To his east is Soul Ripper Noob going first air as a UEF as well. He is a 1700 as Barbie Pink. To his northeast in Imperial Gray it is Teresto. Going first line, he is a UEF and he is a 2000 rated player. And to his west in Amethyst Purple, we have Blissful Noob going first line as a UEF. He is a 1700. In Lightish Red Pink, we have Martin. He going first line as another UEF. Lots of UEF on this team. We have, he is a 1200. And in the East, the first Aeon of the match to be introduced, and the only one, he is Tesla Max going first land. He is a 1,200 in Snow White. And ending the game off here with Team 2's highest rated player, it is Zayo going first land. He is a 2,200 in Ruby Red. He is a Cyber, and he is the highest ranked player in all of the land at this game. Let's take a look at the reclaim here for our players to scoop up. It is 14 players total, and they have 19,000 reclaim, which is a little bit around a 1.5k mass per player to scoop up. And with that out of the way, let's take a look at the mass point layouts. For seven players on each team, there's not really a lot of mexes. It looks like a lot of mexes, but when we're talking about, you know, there's six right here. There's five more right here. And again, there's another, you know, five and three. There's really not a lot of mexes to grab for one side of the map. So our players are going to have to rush to the middle, claim as many mexes as they can, and build up as many mass fabs or rascoms as they can. Let's go ahead and speed this game back up to zero and see what our players are moving. We see a distance build on the way here for Tesla Max. He's going to grab this upper plateau. There's a couple of. Uh, rocks to grab and he's probably going to try to go to the opposite side of the corner or the opposite corner I should say and try to deny Kenny Real Dad in this position over here. His facility was finished, or not finished, but it started first and Kenny is still walking there which means he's going to, it's going to take him a while to get there and unfortunately he does stop to go for a mix which means that land facility will finish and definitely give a team to Tesla Max the advantage in that upper plateau. We see Willow West moving to the west to grab this section of the map. We do see two comms here for Team 2 on the move. Zaya looking like he's going just for some base buildup and eco and all of that. But Martin's going to move all the way east to intercept Willow Whip. So we will definitely see how that works out. He is a 1,200. Excuse me, I had to find his name in the 14 names. And Willow Wisp is a 2,000 rated. So Willow Wisp will have the advantage in that engagement. We see two more comms on Team 1 moving to the west. Another one going for a distance build. This time it's from Blazer O Flasher. But there's already a Spirit online. That Team 1 facility will finish. Unfortunately here for Team 2, or sorry, for Team 1, Team 2 already has a facility. It is already pumping out units as we speak. Lummy Surmise is moving, of course, as well. 
to the western side of the middle to assist with defensive measures over there. And Team 2 has two players moving eastward, Blissful Noob and Testo. I think that's how you say his name, Te Tersto. It's T-E-R-S-T-O, so it makes me think it's Ters and then To. Or Tersoto. Ters nah, anyway, anyway, don't know how to pronounce his name. I think I'm pronouncing it right. Probably isn't. Please let me know down in the comments how you pronounce it. Because, of course, I am in need of some education. Soul Ripper Noob moving to the east as well to assist. Looks like it's going to be two comms here for Team 2. One comm here for Team 2. No comms here for Team 2 as we see. But it does look like maybe Martin's going to move in to that slot while we see Zaya moving to the north and the east to try to uh, detail, or not detail, but to deter Will-O-Wisp in that side of the map. And we also see that Luker has crossed the little water over here and gone west again to assist Will-O-Wisp in that corner of the map. We see the only player on Team 2 that has not left their main base is the rearguard air slot player of Legend Lord 2, which does make sense. He is the rearguard air slot. There are 14 players on the map. And I think he feels like one player isn't going to make a huge difference, which it can or cannot. But I feel like at this stage in the game, having another play on the front line isn't really that important. But we do see that everybody on Team 1 has left, at least in some degree. We do see a Zeros moving south away from his main line and middle line nexus. So all of the players on Team 1 have left their main bases. So maybe Legend of the Lord should leave his main base to intercept. But of course, we have the benefit of all seeing knowledge and the like but he does not we do see might be the first calm on calm action here between team one and team two it is martin he versus let me some rise let me some rise is 300 rating points ahead of martin not a huge jump in uh rating but it does make a little bit of a difference of course and they're just going to start throwing plasma f1 and 0 overcharging to the face of martin's uh acu there we of course do see that let me some rise has issued a Retreat order makes sense. Group up with some of his units and then push westward. And I didn't even describe Team 2's lineup for technology. Team 2 has five players as UEF, one Aeon, and one Cybran, which means Team 2 does not have access to Sarah from technology. Advanced range coming online here for Tesla Max. He already has the regular range. Definitely going to try to see if he can poke at Lovely Some Rice and force him back, is probably his thinking. And we see Kenny Real Dad going for his gun speed and range. Will the Wisp in the noise still hasn't engaged Zayo as of yet, but I would not be surprised to see those comms get in close proximity soon. And a third player on Team 1. This time it's Schmuck Benny moving westward. So it's going to be a 3v1 scenario here for Team 1 versus Team 2. Team 2 definitely needs to remedy that. We do see a couple of units from Lummy Some Rice getting in to that engineer killing off the order to build some wall sections. And uh, it's not going to do a whole lot of damage. It's more, again, annoyance. But annoying is definitely better than nothing. But Team 2 gaining a decent amount of ground in the southeastern corner of the map. Testo, Testo. Still can't pronounce his name right. I don't know what it is. It's just the way it's the way it's written or something. Has little to no opposition. He's perfectly fine. And Team 1 essentially just ignoring him for the time being. Soul Ripper Noob getting a little bit caught, uh, surrounded there a little bit by those units outbound from the Zeros, but not terribly. We do see Kenny Real Dad coming in to assist and pushing him back in gun damage and range on the way here for Blissful Noob. So it looks like it's going to be a 2, v oh, might be a 3v2 in favor of Team 1. And again, remember, it's looking to be like a 2v1 possibly here, and then a 3v1 in favor of Team 1. This is huge. Even if Team 1 has no upgrades, which... Will Wisp does. Luker is going to go. They're just going to go for it. They're just going to go for that uh, that kill. Zayo probably needs to move out of there immediately. Not probably should move out of there immediately. He's going to come charge and see what's going on. But uh, again, probably not the best bet. Again, two UEF comms, one with a gun upgrade, and one Sarah from behind them. And then there goes Zayo being like, nah, I'm good. Nah, I'm good. Will Wisp not focusing on the comm. Focusing on the other un units for some nice efficiency. Three comms, says Zayo. Yeah, that's um, that's not looking good here for <laughs> Zayo over here on this western side of the map. Team 2 needs to respond to this immediately. And looks like Martin does move in to try to assist Zayo on that side of the map. It leaves a little bit of a hole for Team 1 to exploit. And Lummy Simrace might be moving in to uh, occupy said power vacuum. But advanced range is about half done here. For Team 2's Tesla Max, so that might deter Team 1's uh, Let Me Some Ice from pushing in. And now it does look like uh, Willow is just content with reclaiming a little bit. He's going to fall back and let Luca push a little bit. Luca's going to fall back. Schmuck Benny's going to go for his gun damage and range upgrade. 
Those two comms minus Smith assist Schmuck Benny. And that's going to be two gun comms plus a Seraphim comm. That is dangerous. That is very, very dangerous here for Team uh, 2 to let that stay longer than they feel like it should be. We do see a couple of uh, pinching, not pinching, but piercing units here from Team 2. Zayo, just to distract Team 1, allowing a little bit of time for Tesla Max to try to finish that upgrade. He needs to get a little bit... Uh, you know, pep in his step and continue to move northward. The wall sections are being built, but it's going to take a while to finish those wall sections off. So Team 2's uh, frontline player probably needs to speed that process up, which is almost done, so it's not terribly bad. We do see Legend Lore actually moving in north as well to assist just because there are three comms over here for Team 2 to deal with. So everybody officially at this point at eight and a half minutes has left their main bases. The closest one to his main base would be Azuros on this eastern side but of course he's now dealing with Testo on this eastern side he's gonna go for gun Testo doesn't have any upgrades probably should go for gun at least at the minimum just to try to again push in or at least hold team one back and it's again 2v2 1v1 looks like it's gonna be a 1v1 maybe even a 2 2 v, nah, maybe a 2v1 but it's gonna be a 2v3 in favor of team one and there goes the comms pushing in it's like okay and set him up and knock him down. Looks like uh, Lucard has his gun upgrade as well. So each one of these comms has a gun upgrade. Three gun upgrades versus one. We do see a gunship online here for Team 2. It's only just going to annoy the comms outbound from Team 1. Zayo trying to hold this push off. Has a decent amount of units. And the comm of Martin going for T2 to get some more hit points on board that chassis. More gunships coming to join the attack and just try to deter team one again it's three comms with gun upgrades and it, team two has to be very very uh, cognizant of that and we do see some interceptors coming on station to deal with the gunships will the west did drop into the yellow that will slow team one's advance schmuck benny gonna pick up the slack though and try to force team two back but luca's already on the retreat and he's being forced back by zio zio sending all of his forces in to try to just annoy and occupy all of these comms that way he can target one of the comms. Looks like he's targeting uh, Schmuck Benny indirectly as he was going after Luker. Team 1's comms are se not severely weakened, but they are decently weakened. Willowist being the one that's taking the most of the shots. Attack outbound here from Team 1's Love Me Some Rice. We can once again annoy Team 2 Zayo's supply lines. We of course see Martin building some PD for defense. And again, forcing these comms back. And units, there are some TT units now starting to mix in with this attack. Zayo focusing on Willow, he's the most damaged. Willow probably should start thinking about getting out of there. Zayo, of course, is now taking some shots from Schmuck Benny. Oh, Willow Wisp, oh, what are you doing? 5,000 hit points remaining and dropping. Zayo is in the yellow. PD are coming online here for Martin. Martin trying to assist, getting a little bit of reclaim. Needs to get his calm up there to attack and fight. Willow Wisp drops into the red. Sub 24, 23, 2,000 hit points. He's going to fall back. Zayo going to push forward a little bit, but Luker and Schmuck being over here to the uh, northwest, pushing him back. This might be the first kill on the cards here for Team 1. And I'm going to split it a little bit because I see an attack brewing here in the east. So I'm going to split that a little bit just to see what's going on over there. We do see, of course, Willow Wisp now charging once again forward. He's taking a ton of hits, but he wants this hill. And he's going to do whatever he can to get it. Legend are going to come in and assist as well. He doesn't have any upgrades, but again, something's better than nothing. Ilshi's online as well. Zayo trying to stay um, you know, alive and kicking. He's fallen below 2,000 hit points. Smuck Benny still trying to walk him down. Martin probably should just stop building PD and turn around and face the opponent and shoot him. Zayo going to get killed off right here. Oh, that is the first kill on the cards here of the game. Team 2 is the... First team to lose a player. It's now a 6v7 in favor of Team 1. Solar Panoop facing down an incursion here in the Middle East position. And Legend Lord coming in to try to force back Schmuck Benny. Schmuck Benny at 2,700 hit points and climbing. And it does look like uh, Team 1 might lose a player here. Blazer or Flasher is down in the yellow. Sorry, down in the red now, excuse me. Solar Panoop has gun going for T2 PD to try to get him at range. And Blazer or Flasher again dropping uh, almost below 1,500. We'll take a shot to the back. Now we'll, he'll drop fifth below 1,500. And it looks like that is it here for the major attacks. Team 2 loses uh, a comm and their highest rated player as well. That's going to hurt. Oh, that didn't mean to do that. There we go. 
That, it's not a huge loss, though, because uh, it's still a 6v7. So, again, six players. That's What percentage is that? I forget. It's like 16% if it was uh, out of six. I forget what it is out of seven. I think it's like 13 or something. No. It's something. 13 to 14. I can't do I think it's going to do math in my head. 14 times 7. I think it's like 14 point something. Anyway. So we're from Noob going to push forward. Assisting Blissful Noob and forcing back Team 1. And Team 2 has gained some ground in the southeast, though. Pushing back Azuros. So while Team 1 loses the northwest... Sorry, Team 2 gains the northwestern corner. Team 2 gains the southeastern corner. And Team 2 is also forcing their way forward as well. Team 1 a little bit more on the defensive on the southern side of the map. Azuros trying to force back to Soa. He's using a lot of those shields to cover for him. It's a 2,000 rated versus a 2,100. Corsair is over the top two assists and trying to take out that shield, which they do, gives Azuros a little bit of, uh, not breathing room, but a little bit more advantageous positioning to take out that comm. Interceptors over the top, trying to take out those Corsairs that are coming in from Team 1. Some German in chat? Yeah, that looks like German. Uh, bring Iadonix. I don't, don't know what that's a reference to, but I don't speak German. But uh, Zero's focus, being focused here by Tissot. Tissot trying to dodge those Corsair shots, trying to go after Azuros' calm. And again, Tissot at 3,500 and dropping. Azuros at 3,000 and dropping. It might be a murder-suicide situation on the cards here. Let's see. Is it going to be? Yes, it will. Murder-suicide here in the southeast corner of the map. Azuros is killed off by Testo and his explosion kills off uh, the other players. So it's now a... Seven, so six v five, and at the same time, Team One loses another player. It was Bla it was Blazer or Flasher who's being shot at for a while. Blissful Noob caught up to him and killed him off. It's now a five v five at the fourteen minute mark. We do see Love Me Some Rice pushing in on Team Two's western line over here. Looks like Team One, Willowis and Luker have retreated for the time being. They did what they needed to do, and have now decided to retreat for the time being. We do see a bunch of Vipers trying to attack at range with those missile launchers against this position here for Team 2, but those uh, TMD are pretty strong in redirecting all those missiles and dealing with the we're dealing with that incoming threat. Blissful Noob just doesn't even care, going to keep charging forward, just wants to keep walking down his opponents. Kenny in the yellow as well, so has to be very careful not being shot by Blissful Noob. He has nano and gun, 17,000 hit points and a little bit in change online. Is that a missile? Where is that missile going? Missile is just, yep, well, they exploded in the sky. Okay, looks like it was a firework than a missile, and then an actual missile. So Ripper Noob going for an Aloha missile as well, launcher as well, and that is outbound here for the rear, going after the T2 Nexus here for Team One's Luker. We gained that from, uh, that from a Blazer probably, and TMD is able to stop that missile. Unfortunately, here for Team Two's. Solar Panoop loved the play, but just couldn't get it to work just due to the fact that the Zapper is online. Now the game is, I mean, it's definitely slowed down in the northwest. A lot of action did occur over there, and it's kind of just relaxed. We do see a nice little run-by opportunity here for Team 2. Solar Panoop trying to push on this eastern side. A lot of uh, e-storages online to just annoy Luker. He's going to lose some of that e-storages for those overcharges. And as long as those pillars don't get into range of the E-Storage's explosion, they'll be fine. But, of course, they're being bombarded by Corsairs. There is a nice uh, flat cannon online, and there is a parachute as well for defense. T1 PD online, and that'll deal with the rest of those units for the time being. We do see another attack outbound from this one. Noob. This time it's from Titans. We do see some bricks online as well trying to counter them. Definitely will side with the Titan, uh, Titans, the bricks in this regard due to the fact that there are also defenses online for... Uh, who is that? That is a Will O' Wisp. Attack outbound here from Luker in the west. Going after Tesla Max Commander. He has advanced range. He doesn't have speed, so you know, he's not really attacking super quick. But we do see a Titan nearby to assist in another one as well. So he'll be protected for the time being. Doesn't look like he'll lose it. Oh, if, all, if all of the Ilshis were to focus Tesla Max, he probably would die here. We do see some Loyalists online here for the lightish red pink player of Martin. Yeah, he's not being focused. That's very yeah, we even see pings outbound here from Team One saying, hey, you should just target the comm. And now Legend Lord is approaching from the west, helping to assist 
with dealing with those forces. But I feel like Team 1 have an opportunity to kill off the calm of Tesla. Spam E on Tesla. Never mind. Yeah, it's definitely a missed opportunity there. And those Titans still making their way forward here. Going after T2 Mexus here. Doesn't look like they'll get the kill on the last one. They almost do. They drop it into the red. But, uh, oh, just 17 hit points short. And it's definitely annoying. Lummi Samaris is now shifted from the Middle East to the Middle... Sorry, the Middle... The Midwest to the Middle East. Playing over here. Blissful Noob is manning this position for now. And it looks like Solar Noob just falling back a little bit. We try to, again, get a better position. Mix AA says Zayo to Soul Ripper. Yeah, you need T3 and T2. T3, especially for those higher HP units of... You know, you have the gunships and the ASFs. And then the AA being the flak... Those are also designed for the gunship, so you kind of get a mix of both. Get single fire damage, or single target damage, as well as kind of an AoE spread. Tickle Cannon's trying to deter Blissful Noob, but Blissful Noob, again, 17,000 hit points. He wants his fourth star pinned to his chest. Oh, he might... Act, uh, he could have gone for it, but there are now Percy starting to appear here for Kenny Real Dad. Well, not the best engagement, but uh, definitely is not as bad as it looks like. Tactical Missile coming online here for Willow Wisp. Uh, he's going to go for that possibly billion new play. He is UEF. I do see him doing that once in a while, so that's definitely not an uncommon play for him to do. And another attack in the east. More Titans online trying to just shoot down those bricks, essentially saying, hey, if you're going to shoot really quickly, we'll just bring a bunch of Titans and shoot even quicker. And Corsair's over the top here as well, trying to deal with those Titans. Titans staying online, of course, but uh, those PD are starting to rip them to shreds. Multiple groups of engineers working on PD. And they're going to target the T3 land headquarters. I don't know if they have enough firepower. Especially if they uh, get distracted targeting other things. going to target the engineer. They need to target the T3 land headquarters. That's definitely the best thing to go after for the time being. Oh, it's going to be close. They will get the T3 land headquarters dealing with the production of bricks for the time being. And more units are coming in to assist. We might even see Blissful Noob maybe even shift directions and go kind of like a nice hook maneuver and assist. Soul Ripper Noob on that eastern side. Team 1 still trying to deal with Team 2's Tesla Max's position up here. Some of the missiles looks like they're starting to break through, but there's so many TMD that it doesn't even matter at this point. And now we see more military build up here in the Midwest lane. We see a transport laden with a little bit of a brick online. That uh, Aurora is nearby, but unfortunately Aurora versus a brick. Uh, we kind of know which way that's going to go. Don't even need to like do the analytics about that. That brick will win every single time. And Luther now facing down some loyalists. He does have some Othams as well and some Ilshis and the combo of Lummy some rice. So he'll be fine for the time being. Team one again fell back a little bit, but still holding the majority of the northeastern corner. Giving them a decent amount of mass to play with. We do see Willow is going for the tactical nukes. As I said, he would go for Billy Nuke, and he did. And at almost 20 minutes in the game, let's take a look at the overall game. Team 1, five players left. Team 2 also at five players left. Team 1 has lost Azuros and Blazer or Flasher. Team 2 has lost Terstow and Zayo. Zayo being the highest ranked player of the game. Team 1 producing almost as much mass as Team 2. It kind of fluctuates a little bit, but it's essentially the same mass, depending on uh, power uh, generation and all of that. Team 2 definitely in the lead for total map control, especially with this push out bounding from Blissful Noob and uh, Soul Ripper Noob just ripping through Azeros' old base going after Luker's base that he inherited from Blazer or Flasher. But of course, let me know down in the comments who you think is going to currently win the game. If you haven't done so already, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, share this video with anyone, everyone, and especially your pets. And of course, thank you so very much for watching. I really do appreciate the time and attention that everyone gives to these videos. And again, it doesn't matter to me if you watch one minute, ten minutes, an hour, a thousand videos. I don't have a thousand videos yet, but I will at some point. But I do appreciate all the time and attention you do play or pay to my channel. Thank you so very much. And of course, those Titans are pushing in as well, dealing with those units. That they're just trying to break on through, and they've gotten a little bit further, but there's a lot of T1 PD being built. And those Titans need to focus those Engineers. Engineers will finish that one order and probably will deal with both of those uh, Titans relatively easy. Schmuck Benny has now rotated down south to assist with the defensive measures here for Luker. But look at this. Team 2 
killed off an entire base worth of mexes. And it looks like there's a attack outbound here from Blucher, but it's not really getting anywhere. Team 2 is holding the ground for the time being. So we'll see how that plays out. Team 2 also has Martin over here to the west, just kind of shelling this position. But well, those units built from Will-O-Wisp. will wisp kind of just hanging them out to dry almost. Not really doing a whole lot with them. I do, I would like to uh, just state this. I appreciate that the pink players are on one team and the orange players are on another team. Obviously, there is one purple player on team one and team two, but at least one is a pretty dark color. One is a pretty light color, so it's very easy to tell the difference. So again, thank you so much for those who kind of coordinated that. makes casting that much easier. So I just wanted to shout out to those players who did a little bit of color coordination there. Schmuck Bunny does have his personal continental transport next to him, just kind of hanging out. And, of course, it has a nice little bubble shield around it, protecting itself and anybody on board. And it, it is a really good transport, I might add. It is very, very useful for transporting a ton of Percy's across the map. I just don't really see them a lot, but the first Billy Nuke is outbound here from will -Wiz going for this army that's just sitting here. And there's no TMD online. That Billy Nuke is going to land, and it's going to hurt. Kaboom! <laughs> there it goes, taking out a ton of units. And that Will-O-Wisp has his own personal transport and is going somewhere else. And he's going to, instead of a teleporter, just get the Continental and calls it good. Can you please drop the commander so I can see how much mass you killed off? Legend Lord says uh, he's annoyed at Will-O-Wisp. 15,000 mass, 5-star vacancy. Going to build his second Billy Nuke and go from there. Very good play here from Willow Wisp. Just going in, getting the shot, and leaving. Killed a ton of units off in that engagement. Very, very good move here from Willow Wisp. And if he keeps doing that, I mean, Team 1 will definitely uh, be... Uh, he'll definitely be a contender for MVP. Probably drop soon, says Zayo. Oh, talking about the bricks to the, the lower section. Team 1 has now claimed the upper plateau in the middle of the map from Tesla Max. Tesla Max is probably annoyed about that and is now going to build some volcanoes to defend, but she doesn't really need to worry about. There's no TMLs. There's no... Well, I mean, he probably should have some TMD back there, but there's no mobile missile launchers online to deal with. Of course, we do have some zappers dealing with the spearhead missiles for the current moment, but uh, for the time being, it's not too bad. And now we have a Continental here for Kenny Real Dad, so all of the UEF commanders on Team 1 remaining have... Uh, their own continental and looks like Kenny Real Dad also uh, is a cybern so he's just being hoisted away he was gifted that over by team one probably from I would assume schmuck Benny but that's such an interesting point I don't see the continental used that often it's used that often so it's good to see that unit getting some nice uh, front and center action schmuck Benny just gonna push his way forward He's a three-star vacancy and gun upgrade. We'll get his fourth here pretty shortly. There are some Percy's in the mix. Has to be very careful. He has a little bit over 15,000 hit points. Well, a little bit over, but 15.599 hit points. So, and again, nothing to, to scoff at, but you know, probably a dozen or so Percy shots will deal with that relatively quickly. One solitary broadsword dealing with these bricks. Love to see. Oh, and then he just... Okay, he got shy, I guess I was going to say. Love to see just one thing devoted to that, not just a bunch of units going after a couple of bricks, but just like, oh, I'll just have this unit kill off these bricks. Maybe he'll die, maybe he won't, but at least I'll deal with it. Another Billy Nook to the west. Looks like it went after Martin He's forces. That's another Will of Wisp one. 23,000 mass killed, almost 24 just for that comm alone. And are we going to see some counter Billy Nukes? Yes, we are. Tactical Missile coming online here for Legend Lore. I would not be surprised to see him go Billy. I mean, he's UEF, might as well. If you're UEF and you only build a tactical missile, I kind of question you sometimes. Maybe mass and energy might be an issue. But you have the, the potential to build a Billy Nuke. Why not just build a Billy Nuke? That's, you, just do it. Just be like Shia LaBeouf and just do it. Yeah, I, I made that reference. Schmuck Bunny's over here to the northeast. He has gun. He probably should go Billy Nuke. But just have every UEF commando go Billy Nuke this game. Why not? And now we have some artillery fire here from the west going after the units over here to the east. And you can just see how annoying this position is for Team 2. Team 1's Kenny, just, you know, a ton of zappers to deal with all the missiles, a couple of artillery pieces, and a couple of PD. And Team 2 is just ignoring it. They do not want to deal with it. 
They could easily deal with it. They could send all of these forces and just go left and call it a day, but they don't want to. So kind of a missed opportunity there. There's also now a Fat Boy online here for Team 1, so long range, not long range, but medium range artillery mobile online. We have uh, more buildup, of course, of everything. We have Bullowhistle over here in the corner. He looks like he's being uh, transported here pretty shortly. Now, where are you going, sir? You're you're running around. You should just build, at this point, just build the teleporter. If you're going to just transport all around the map with your your transport, you might as well just get on, not get on a transport, but uh, get a teleporter and call it a day. He's just going to sit there for the time being, I guess. Bad boy's been transferred over to Luker so he can manage the front line a lot better. Not manage the front line, but manage the unit a lot better on the front line. There we go. English is hard. Airgrid being nice and plump here for two players on Team 2, both from Legend Laura and from uh, Soul Ripper Noob. And Team 1, oh, I think, only has the one. Well, they have a small airgrid here for Luker, but the main airgrid here is for Schmuck. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, schmuck is very fun to say. I don't I don't know why. It's just, it is. And I do not know why. Tactical new coming online here for Legend Lord. There you go, going for that. So we have currently Team 1 has one Tactical Billy Nuke. Or just Billy Nuke, I should say. And I think that's it. You're Cybran, the only other player. Yep, you're, here you're going for T2. And then Team 2 has Luke, uh, Legend Lord. Uh, Soul Ripper Noob could have it. Blissful Noob went for shield. And I think that's it. Oh, Martin. Martin's over here. He has drone on board. As a fight over the top of Team 2's base, Team 2 will win that fight, unfortunately, for Team 1. Or they're going to just tie it out. Just depends on how the AA goes. Looks like Team 1 just barely wins that fight. Uh, and Billy Nuke. Again, once outbound here for Team 1's will o Going to go in the middle of those bricks and... I thought they were Percy's there, but just bricks. And that's going to very much annoy. He He's going to lose, I think, five or six of those bricks at a minimum. Uh, one, two, three, four of them. Yep. Nice little opener for that attack. There's more units down here for he to defend with. And it's Othams and Percy's charging. Love, of course, every time I see Percy's intermixed with another faction. I love, love, love to see it. Another Continental flying around this time from Team 2. Don't know where it's going, but it's going somewhere. Tactical Nuke almost is done. And Legend Lore, hopefully, that, thinking that that Billy Nuke will finish. That way he can just launch it right here. And Team 2 now having to divert all of their forces southeastward to intercept these units. Stickle Cannons can only do so much to thwart the incoming threat. We have some Broadswords online as well. I think all of the AA has been killed. Actually, excuse me. Now all the AA has been killed off. Free reign for those broadswords to operate. Team 1 does have some ASF they can divert to this, which they're going to go straight for it, it looks like. But uh, I think the damage is mostly done at this point. We have a Harminger now in range. And there's now some ASF fight. ASF's going to move in and intercept, even though Team 2 just lost the ASF fight. They have a lot more ASFs to play with, and that will net a victory here for Team 2, gaining them air control. Just barely. Not air dominance by any means, but air control. And these units just going to avoid the base here for Legend Lord. He was on an upgrade. They might have been able to kill him off. Definitely a missed opportunity there. And it took Legend Lord in two and a half minutes to build that tactical nuke. And, of course, the units have been killed off with the PD and all the other forces devoted to that defense. Fatboy in the east assisting a Monkey Lord. Team 2's forces have to retreat. Crab as well there. Team 1 being very defensive in uh, how far they push out. They just want to claim these mexes for now. So Ripper New builds his own experimental. It's probably a monkey or it's a fat boy. It's a fat boy. He does have fat boy over here. But again, if that monkey from Team 1 goes in the range, comes in the range, it's not really going to work out there for that monkey. That monkey, fat boy. But with two of them online, it might deter Team 1 from pushing forward. And especially if they get that third one, we'll definitely be like, nah, it's not going to move forward. Just gonna, it's just going to hang out. Just Go back home. Where is Will-O-Wisp? There he is. There's that transport again. He's killed off 28,000 mass. Now where is he going? Dude, you get crushed on land on every front, but think about SMD. Oh, Billy Nuke lands oh, <laughs> on Tesla Max base. Ouch, that's got to hurt. Oh. Oof, we got crushed from the other side, uh, so they got to save themselves. 
talking about Blissful Ninja's allies. Oh, that's got to hurt. 56,000 mass killed off. Man, he's, uh, you know, every Billy Nuki is able to uh, make land is just more and more making you think that he'll be the man of the match. Unless he just dies randomly, which does happen. It does happen sometimes where he's the first killed off and, like, you, what happened there? But it just it just happens. And it goes five mechs is killed off. Team two is Tesla Max is essentially not knocked out of the game just yet. But for the most part, is kind of just on autopilot just trying to rebuild. So team one essentially knocked out another player. It's technically still 5v5, but realistically it's more 5v4. And in terms of mass, team one is barely in the lead for that one point six versus one point actually one point seven now. One, nope. Can't make up their minds. One point five for team two. And those fat boys are in range of one another. And this fat boy however for team two is Soul Ripper Noob has uh, seen better days for sure, but this one is coming into range as well. So again two V one there are some gunships moving into intercept. You can see them flying underneath those ASFs. I do find it pretty cool that uh, different units have different flight heights. The ASFs fly at the highest, and then I think it's the, the Corsairs and the gunships have the same height, I think. You can see how high up they are. And the gunships do get revenge for their fat boy. That killed off Zio. you dead. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is going on? Uh, what the heck is going on? Hold on. I just want to pause it just for a brief second because I'm... What is going on? Uh, yeah, you were way too slow, right? Dude, you got crushed on everything. Okay, da, 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 da. Uh, you're dead. Wow, okay, don't need to be that aggressive with it. He was just giving his take. Oh, dang. That was a, a little aggressive from Kenny Real Dad. But, I mean, I, I don't know the context. I don't know if they're on comms, though I have no idea. But that was an ally chat, so I don't see how Kenny Real Dad could have known what he said, unless they're talking on comms, which is the only reason why I think that they're on comms. A Billy Nuke lands here from Legend Lord impacts the shield for that fat boy. It doesn't really do a whole lot of damage to anything else, but its main target was the fat boy, so it takes out chunk of hit points. Willow and those Continental says Kenny. <laughs> I mean, Willow is just transporting around the map. Again, he should just go teleport and call again. He's going to launch another Billy Nuke. Probably get his comm back on that transport and call it a day. And there goes that Billy Nuke. It's outbound. There's no TMD. See, this is where Loyalist would come in handy and redirecting all these Billy Nukes. Oh, there it goes. Going to kill off a ton of Percy's. Oh, that's the, probably at least a dozen or so. Oh. Schmuck Benny starts his tactical nuke. Okay, land uh, Willow Wisp. I can look at their mass again. Loyalist, don't stop Billy. Yes, they do. We just saw a match that they stopped Billy. They're having a conversation about it to counter their stupid nuke TML loyal. I mean, they do Azuros. I've seen it. I, I mean, okay, when you say stop, technically you don't shoot the missile down. You redirect it. So it definitely does work. So I don't know what the heck uh, Azuros is talking about. And Will West now at 72,000 mass kill. He's killed off 166 units. Blazer is at negative one. Can you, I'm assuming, please, please leave. You're already dead. Yeah, it's it's rough when you're dead and you just want to to watch and kind of give some, you know, intel. Like, hey, there's something over here. There's something over here. But if you're, like, lagging the game for everybody, it's kind of a rock in a hard place. Another Billy New Gap on here from Will-O-Wisp. Let's lock onto his comm with my middle mask. I can see how much mass he kills off. He's going to go for Tesla Max again. That's kind of a little messed up. But there is a TMD nearby. Will it grab it? Nope, it's just going to land there. Never mind. Looks like there was probably something there, but uh, decided not to land. Or not to land, not to uh, hit its target. ASF fight once again. These ASFs here from Team 2, Soul Ripper Noob, are kind of just hanging out. Looks like Team 1 wanted a fight, and uh, Team 1 got one. But uh, I don't think they... Uh, I think they underestimated how many ASFs Team 2 had, and therefore... Uh, team 2, especially with uh, when you count Legend Lord's forces in there as well. Oh, okay, okay, Lucre has some as well, so again, in those in those situations where two players on a team have uh, ASFs, my opinion, you should just give most, not you don't have to give all of them, but most of those ASFs to one of the players just so they can micro it a lot better. Having two groups of ASFs is 
sometimes annoying to coordinate because you don't know when the other player is going to move left or right or go this way or that way. I mean, al always have ASFs at your disposal for dealing with gunships or broad, you know, broad sorts, dealing with uh, gunships, but uh, and uh, and strap bombers. But Team Two's Martin has been taken out by Will O Wisp, a combination of a Fat Boy and a Billy Nuke. And has got to hurt. Team 2 loses another player. It's now officially a 4v5 in favor of Team 1. And, uh, hey, Willow, can you stop getting on a transport so I can look at how much mass you've killed off? And now Solo Panuber inherited over there. Billy Nuke lands trying to go after the Fat Boy. Fat Boy does get away, but is severely wounded. An ASF fight once again, this time in the middle of the map. Where are Le uh, Legend Lords ASF? I don't know. Looks like they were probably killed off. And it looks like Team 1 might gain air control. Or, uh, uh, ASF's not really moving that much. There is a couple of AA over there, but not a lot. Yeah, Team 2 loses all of their ASFs. Team 1 has air dominance at the current moment here at 35 minutes on the clock. Gunships are moving in, going after some P-Gens. I don't know if that's really worth their time to cool off three T3 land facilities, but... Uh, and like I said, I don't know if it's really worth it. Sam sites are being built to uh, deal with that incoming threat. But again, Team 1's pulling very, very defensive over here on this northern side. But on the eastern side, they have five experiments and another Billy Nuke. This time it's outbound, I think, from Schmuck. Schmuck uh, looks like, yeah, it looks like it's his 15,000 because I think Will O Wisp was not in range. He's over here. He's okay. So now, after, you know, getting on a transport, running all over the map, now. He's going for Teleporter. 87,000 mass killed off before he goes for Teleporter. Now let's see how much mass he'll kill off after he goes for Teleporter. But two, th four crabs online and one monkey, one fat boy. Ah, that's not great here for Team 2. Another fat boy over here. Billy Nuke is outbound. And those broadswords are going to weaken the shields around said fat boy. And it might be enough to kill the fat boy out. Oh, yeah, most definitely will, especially with the broadswords. Uh, Taking out the shield. The shield is down. The broadswords get out of range. And the Billy, the Billy Nuke does not kill off the fat boy. Less than 100 hit points left. Just one shot. Well, a couple of shots would do it. Broadswords actually go back. They want the kill. And they're going to get the kill. And more broadswords, of course, do get killed off. But that's definitely worth the uh, price of admission. Team 1 has five experimentals here on this eastern side. Now closing in on Blissful Noob's position. Not Blissful Noob, sorry. Soul Ripper Noob's position. Or if Noob's actually in the water down there. And the teleporter has been done here. He's loading the missile as we speak. Looks like he launched another Billy Nuke. There it is right there. It's outbound. Going for those bricks. Kills off more mass than anything else. But again, that's better than nothing. Still sitting at... Now he's at 92,000 mass. He's going to He's going to load his another Billy Nuke. And he's going to transport... Or sorry, not transport. Teleport. Where is he going? Oh, he's going to right here. Oh, oh. Does he know where the comm is? Probably knows where the comm is. At least knew at some point. Again, three crabs and a monkey. One crab just got defeated. This other crab back up here is on the uh, upper plateau shooting down. Has the nice high ground over there. Team 1 severely covering this position with all of their ASF. Team 2 needs AA online immediately. Billy Nuke is outbound going for the air grid. And Will-O-Wisp should be teleporting out of there. Yep, there he goes. Probably just had to wait for power or something. And it's going to impact the middle of that air grid. And there it goes. Takes out at least half. Oh, well, it's at least a third. But still, decent amount of mass killed. 125,000 mass killed off by that one comm. Most of it being from that Billy Nuke upgrade. Another Billy Nuke outbound here from Team 1. They're not even going to build standard nuke launchers. They're just going to do Billy Nukes. Team 2, I don't even know where their TMDs are. There should be TMDs all over the map at this point because they know now two comms on Team 1 are going for Billy Nuke, and they should just be building TMD. Yeah, it's, you know, it takes a little bit more shots from a TMD to deal with the Billy Nuke, but still, there comes the Billy Nuke to clean up the rest of the defenses. There it goes. Looks like the crab might be killed off by the rest of these Ravagers. Oh, it was close. It was close and does get a rank convention C, so it's no longer close. That boy trying to run away. Team 2's eastern side is collapsing, and Billy Nuke lands over here to the northwest right next to Luker. Luker gets out of range, but uh, 
doesn't get the singe this a whole lot. Monkey Lloyd did try to invade outbound from Legend Lloyd. That doesn't work. Let me surmise says, well, that's annoying. Billy Nuke outbound once again going to land right here. And there's no TMD. I wonder. I mean, maybe that's in reference to that. I don't know. But there it goes. Kaboom. Takes out all of this. A couple pigeons in some defenses. And laser over the top going after the T2 mass trap surrounding those T3 mechs. Oh, another Billy Nuke to the east. Looks like it's outbound once again from Schmuck Benny. He's at 89,000 mass. So, so 90,000 mass for Schmuck and 125,000 here for Will-O-Wisp. That is over 200,000 mass killed off by two comms, mostly from Billy Nukes. And a lot of, a lot of uh, mass killed off by those two comms. And these two comms here from Team 1 trying to retreat underneath shield coverage. They'll be fine. And Team 1 now has an artillery piece as well. So now Billy Nukes and artillery is the main focus here for Team 1. Team 2, uh, it's not looking good. The aircraft's not looking good there, bud. Um, oh, kills all the engineers off. And another third of that uh, air grid. Not looking good here for Team 2's air. Not looking good. Looks like a Slurper's going for some more... Uh, Corp monsters to defend. There is a monkey look coming into the water. And once he dips his uh, head underneath it, his secondary cannons will not be able to activate just those torpedoes. Let's see. Anything else is... Uh, is Willow Wisp going somewhere? Nope, he's still... Looks like he's still loading his other Billy Nuke. And it looks like the laser's focused on the comms. At this point, I wouldn't be focused on the comms. Take out all the P-Gens. Take out all the mechs that you can. Just take out the mass income here for Team 1. Team 2 is sitting at 2.3, 2.5. Looks like it might be power related at some point. But uh, they're sitting at a ton of income. They're just not funneling it into anything. And unfortunately here for Team 2, they now have a monkey they have to deal with. Silver Panoop just couldn't produce enough uh, torp launches to deal with it. Another Billy Nuke in the east impacting the shield on that Fat Boy. Fat Boy says stop doing that. Crab receiving some fire to its back. And there are some T2 artillery trying to be built up to deal with the Fat Boy. But... I don't think it's going to be within time. Gunships diverted to this uh, Lincoln Road in the south. But T3 Air Headquarters should be the main target here. Tons of PD got taken out almost immediately because of that explosion from said Pijin. Right there. It's right there. I don't think crushing damage is a thing with a Monkey Lloyd. It is not. That's annoying. Billy Nuke lands once again. Actually, no, it's not a Billy Nuke. Looks like it's an explosion. From Legend Lore's commander from Schmuck Benny. Schmuck Benny with those uh, strap bombers over top. Team 2 loses another player. It's now a 3v5 in favor of Team 1. And let's see. Let's see. Willow is still loading that missile. Missile is outbound here from Schmuck Benny once again. Im trying to impact against those fat boys. Fat it's going to land in the middle of both of them. Doesn't get shot down, but the shield is down and then opens the door for that Megalith to open fire. Transport being shot down by those fat boys and then actually gets killed off with the comm on board. Team 1 loses another player. This time it's Schmuck Benny, the other player going for the Billy Nuke. Just spam. Team 1 loses a player. It's 4v3. Still in their favor. But man, that's got to suck. And that is why, folks, do not put your transport in range of artillery because it will shoot it and it will blow it up and you will be on it and you will be set. So... Just a cautionary tale for that. Bricks trying to force their way forward, go after these bad boys, but I don't think they'll be able to get there. A lot of AA over top going to protect that fat boy. Fat boy might die. Yep, it does die. Just, just enough Corsair. Secondary group of Corsairs going after the other fat boy. Is it going to be enough? I don't think so. There's a lot of AA in the area. Another fat boy right here. Nope, that uh, fat boy does survive for the time being. Team 2 has lost two groups of mechs here. This one over here and this one over here. And a huge air grid. And the other air grid here for Legend Lore has been destroyed. So Team 2 is severely lacking air power. And they have a artillery to deal with. So really not looking good here for Team 2. Especially on the rear uh, infrastructure side. Two air grids, of course, with one artillery piece online. Team 1 is uh, just funneling everything they have into that. And will is going for another artillery piece as well. We have another, looks like he launched a Billy Nuke at some point. Don't know where it went, but it looks like the spam is real here for Team 2's Blissful Noob. Not Blissful Noob, sorry, Soul Ripper Noob. Don't know why I confused the two, but I do. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of facilities here pretty shortly. 
Fat boy still alive. Still alive. This fat boy also still alive. 2,000 hit points. Oh, one more shot will do it. Oh, it just got scared out of range of that artillery. One more shot is inbound. Will it hit? No, it does not. Oh, oh, it gets him at the last second. Oh, that's got to hurt. But the at least the fat boy wreck is right there on Team One's doorstep. So it's not a huge loss, but still annoying. And the spam is real in the south. And it looks like Blazer, please leave. You're a negative two. It looks like a schmuck Benny's like, hey, you should just leave. And Wilbur says PM him. All right, for uh, Soul Ripper, just say, hey, don't attack me. I'm just going to hang out down here. And uh, I feel like Zergling Rush might be what we want to call this pretty shortly because the spam is real. A lot of it are Hunters and Medusa. That That's a lot of spam out bound here from Team 2. Artillery still landing against Blissful Noob. Does Team 1 have, like, a regular nuke? Or are they just... What are they going after for Blissful Noob? He has the satellite over here in his base. He is building his own duke, but he's not really focusing on it. So I don't really know why it's that much of a focus for Team 1. Second artillery is online, and that will definitely punch through the shields. And those units are still pushing in. Team 2, that's their idea now, just... Overwhelm the defenses here for Team 1 and call it a day. I feel like I'm going to speed it up just a tiny bit because it's... Well, look at it. It's just artillery versus spam. And most... I mean, I have seen matches where the spam pushes through and matches that don't push through. But with two artillery, it's definitely going to annoy Team 2. Oh, Willowis is teleporting once again. Don't know where he's going, but looks like he's going to have some fun somewhere. Looks like, uh, actually, just slow it down. I want to see where he looks like he's going. Down here. Launches a, a tactical missile immediately and then teleports immediately. Oh, he's going after Soul Ripper. Nope, nope, it's going over here. It's going over here. TMD should have been built in this base a while ago, but it was not, it looks like. Looks like maybe Blissful Noob was standing here. Shields. Oh, take a hit. Lose those PD. It looks like, yeah, it looks like uh, Blissful Noob is the target. Strap Bombers are inbound here from Will-O-Wisp. Love that one-two punch here from Will-O-Wisp. Takes out the shield, takes out the Pigeon as well, and kills off that satellite. I mean, it would have been a nice one-two punch, but uh, wasn't able to get the kill. But, you know, it still did a lot of damage. Blissful Noob did have the shield, and it took out all of his shield and then some. So had he not had the shield upgrade on board, he would have been killed off. So that is definitely an argument to be made about going for shield. But, I mean, the power of the Billy Nuke plus teleporter is insane. 128,000 mass killed. I didn't see how much mass before Schmuck Finney. I know it was like 90-something, but I don't know if he got more killed off before then or not. But T3 Mex is the main target for these broads, so it's taken out one, two, at least two of them, and a minute, three of them, actually. So that's... Uh, 75 something mass. I think it's like 70. I think it's like 81 actually. Because it's 27 times 3. 25 times 3 is 75. Plus 2 times 3. Yeah, 81. Colossus leading the charge of a bunch of spam. Perfectly speed game. Well, that's a little bit of lag right there. And look at look at that. Just look at that in the distance. Look at this nonsense outbound here from Team 2. Colossus is now in range. Oh, oh, it looks like it's just a little bit. I'm at, I'm at zero. I might just slow it down a little bit because it looks like it's going a little bit too fast. Okay, maybe it's better now. Maybe it's just because of the way I was moving around. But I think I actually kind of liked it like a tiny bit slow it down. There we go. Hmm. Game is running, I think, a little bit. I don't know what it is. It just feels like the game is going too quick at zero. I don't know if it's because it's the... All of the land spam that does exist for Soul Ripper. How much do you have, sir? 900 Medusa. Uh, sorry. Yeah, 900 Medusa. 400 Lobos. And a couple of uh, T3 units. That's it. That is, that is excessive. That is too many. That is too many. I think I'll go back up to zero, actually. I'm kind of debating how zero and negative one looks. I think... Zero is fine. It just really looked weird, I think, at that angle. Awasaw Bomber online from Lucre. Love to see it. Gonna go after that spam. Actually, no, gonna just go after that solitary demolisher up on the hill. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's what 
That's that's the response to that demolisher. No. No soup for you. No. <laughs> no. You're not you're not going to sit up there and artillery shell me. Not going to happen. Artillery is being built here by a blissful noob once again. Needs more shielding, especially when he's uh, facing down two artillery pieces. Billy Nuke lands in the middle of that Zergling rush there. Team 1's will o now at 132,000 mass. Doesn't yield a lot of mass killed because the units are really, really, really cheap. But when you kill off a ton of them, how many units? 263 units killed on board that commander. And now Brick's being assaulted by some fat boys as well. Team 1's starting to lose territory. It's starting to show a little bit. But this is more because of the fat boys than anything else. Awasar Bomber over the top. Going to go after that. Fat Boy, Fat Boy trying to produce more engineers to scoop up the reclaim. Cougars over the top, or on the bottom, not over the top. Bomber over the top, take out more than half the hit points on board that Fat Boy. One more pass through and it will kill off that Fat Boy, but the Corsairs divert to this Fat Boy, kill that one off after they kill this one off. Team two just cannot seem to get Billionix to stay online and Blissful Noob dies? Oh, it's Control K, okay. I was like, that. there's nothing near him, so it should be fine. This is the max building a donut. Looks like Soul Ripper Noob will inherit everything Blissful Noob had, and it's now just a bunch of pink. And again, Will O Wisp with this tiny little uh, pawn going after Soul Ripper. Soul Ripper survives just barely. And now Will O Wisp at 138,000. I mean, that, that tiny little pawn, I mean, he just, it's just enough to stick his head above the water. Just, just enough. Look at that. That is nuts. And here comes some um, tort bombers going after the column of Soul Ripper. Will he be killed up by those tort bombers? There's only two of them. Actually, excuse me, one of them. One of them just got killed off, so maybe not. There's a lot of AA over here, so I don't think they're really going to get a whole lot of work done over there. Bunch of T2 air headquarters. Oh, producing Corsairs. I mean, you don't need to do that. But you can do that. I just don't think you need to. Mavor, where? Why? Okay. First, why is it not shielded? B, why is it not all the way back here? So it's out of range and out of vision and all that. And C, just why? Why is it there? Like, why is it up there? It's up on the hit, up on the plateau. That's cool, but it's not really that tactical, in my opinion. The artillery can reach everything, so it doesn't really matter about the range. But still, another group of units killed off here by those bombers. They haven't even got a one-star of efficiency yet just because the mass value of those units is not really... You got 50% of the map, says Martin. I mean, look at that. <laughs> look at the nonsense. It, this is the, essentially the definition of quality versus quantity at some point. Look at the spam. Now how much does Will uh, Soul Ripper have? 1,000 Lobo, 700 Medusa. Dang, son. That is so many. <laughs> Too many, I'd say. And it does look like the Team 2 loses Soul Ripper Noob to Will-O-Wisp. He shoots another shot. Uh, I'll do it on my own time, says Will-O-Wisp to Blissful Noob. Something about maybe he was ordered by it. Like, just kill him. Oh, looks like... I can't move my own, my comm says uh, Silver Pistol. So it looks like something happened and he just got stuck. And Team 1 will gain another scout, but now everything is white. And the last player remaining on Team 2 is Tesla Max. And it's him versus the world. He's producing essentially as much match as the entire Team 1 combined. Just a little bit short. My computer might not got this, says uh, Tesla Max. And it looks like he's getting some encouragement. Not the epic game. No, not the epic game. I was thinking about trying to make it to an hour match, but there's so much spam. Yeah, Maver's not going to go anywhere. Two hit points. Oh, now it's going to be restarted. Looks like it probably was destroyed and then rebuilt. Paragon almost done, says uh, Martin to Team 1. Team 1 doesn't have Aeon. Team 2 does. So, you know, that's, uh, that's a thing. L nice little heart there with some engineers essentially trapped. News Epic Army, says Soul Ripper. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, a thousand Lobos, six hundred Medusa, s almost six hundred Mech Marines, two hundred Hunters. That's just so much spam. So so much spam. I understand the logic behind it, just overwhelm the defenses, but 
when your opponent's producing monkey lords, bricks, crabs, I mean, tons of HP, shoot, you know, high fire rate, I always say rapid fire, but high fire rate, it's just not going to make a di difference, especially with two Awasa bombers just ripping through defensive lines very, very quickly. It's just it's not going to work here for Team 2 doing that. I do understand, that, again, I have seen it work before, but it doesn't work all the time, unfortunately. Mavor Trolls says, uh, I'm going to make sure to kick them from my lobbies next time, says Ken Real Dad, or Kenny Real Dad. Uh, Soul and Tesla. I don't think Tesla Max was being very uh, trolly. I just inherited the AIDS. <laughs> Tesla Max, uh, game is over. You know it, so leave. That's not how you should treat somebody. Just because you know the game might be over doesn't mean that you force them to leave. Just kill him, says Martin. And there are ASF surrounding him. Where is... Uh, oh, I was going to say, where is he when you need him? Will the Wisp is, yes, sir. PD going to be built to try to deter the incoming threat of... Will-O-Wisp at there are some uh, torp bombers don't work on land, sir. They have to be only on air, on air, on water. They don't work on air either. There's Will-O-Wisp going to move in with his commander. Gunships are inbound and kill off the comm of Team 2's remaining player of Tesla Max. And that is a win here for Team 1. The man of the match or the MVP goes to Will-O-Wisp with his nonsense of a Oh, look, he launched his billionaire. Look at that. He launched his billionaire at the last second. 145,000 mass killed on board that commander. Again, plus the one from Schmuck Benny. Sorry, yeah, Schmuck Benny. So probably about 250,000. As much mass as it takes to build it, literally anything in this game, Team 1 killed with Billy Nukes. Pretty much. Let me know down in the comments how you felt about this game. I really much enjoyed it. The, the transporting Billy Nuke nonsense. Transport gets you know, killed off. And transport uh, calm dies because of it. Very good game. Let me know down in the comments how you felt, of course. Please, if you haven't done so already, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see all of you in the next one.